the heart condition. They strap you to a bed because they know that while you're under, you're going to move. While they scrape your aorta and prod at your ventricles, they don't want you to shift and accidentally slice an important vein. That would be a lot of paperwork. You peel back the gauze. Your favorite part is seeing the stitches, the place where the skin will raise and pucker, kissing the sky as it adds to the mountain range, zigzagging across your chest. In between the jagged formations, are rivers of perspiration and soiled sediments of the fallen epithelial layer. Under the hospital gown, you pull the tape from your skin. They get smaller, the scars. The operations get less invasive. You haven't had to take out a rib for a few years. You're closer to recovery. That's what the doctors always tell you. You look at them and smile in feigned belief as you push more painkillers into the crook of your arm. A girl in red and white pinstripes walks into your room. She looks at you like you're another piece of furniture in this hospital, worn and used, which would have been okay if she wasn't so damn pretty. She's the candy-striped fox that slinks around your room. She's the toe-head of Lucifer before the fall. She's the planet of Venus seen from Earth. She's Norma Jean before the knife and Elvis before 30. She pulls the plastic ficus out of its pot and takes out an old book. She goes to your bedside and plucks out a few pills from a Dixie cup. She slides the visitor's chair to your windowsill and reads from a hardcover copy of 100 Years of Solitude. You watch her read about 50 pages, every flipped page becoming a new Rorschach test, a pair of lungs, an anatomical scrotum, a flock of crows. You should tell her what's in those pills, but you forget. She's so damn pretty. But then her head tilts, seasickened by the moving time. The book smashes. Now what are you supposed to do? You have needles that stake you down to the bed. Become the hero, become the bystander, become a witness in the Sunday news. Are you okay, you ask? You get a response in Morse code twitches. Your brain is losing oxygen and you need someone in here, but this time, it isn't for you. You see them give her the same accessories you've been decorated with for so many years. A plastic tube metal, a mint green bib, a few bags to keep her hydrated for the race ahead. Ready, set, go. Wish your racer luck.